Gen Z Investors One index fund could make you a stock market millionaire. Although technically, this could literally make anyone a stock market millionaire. So stock market declines are never pleasant, but they can be especially hard for young investors that lack experience. In fact, about 20% of Generation Z and millennial investors actually closed their trading accounts during the 12-month period that ended in September 2022. In many cases, that decision was likely influenced by losses suffered as the stock market soared during the post-pandemic rally and then collapsed as economic conditions deteriorated. But social media puts young investors at an even bigger disadvantage. The sheer volume of financial misinformation readily available on most social platforms is staggering. And separating the sensible opinions from the nonsense can be difficult. Professional advisors are generally judged on past performance, but social influencers are judged on followers and likes, regardless of whether they offer good advice. That puts Gen Z investors in a very difficult spot. Many have suffered sizable losses in stocks and cryptocurrencies during the current bear market, and most are constantly bombarded with financial advice of questionable quality. But avoiding the stock market is not the answer. So the secret to becoming a stock market millionaire. The most important thing Gen Z investors need to know is the stock market, no matter how discouraging in the short run, has consistently created wealth over long periods of time. The S&P 500 index, commonly seen as a benchmark for the US stock market, has endured seven bear markets and seven recessions in the last five decades, but it has still produced a total annualized return of 10.3% during that time period. In other words, the secret to making money in the stock market is a long-term mindset. To quote legendary investor Warren Buffett, the stock market is designed to transfer money from the active to the patient. Unlike many prominent social influencers, Buffett has an astounding track record that makes his investing advice particularly credible. His knack for picking good stocks has made him one of the wealthiest people in the world, and it has helped Berkshire Hathaway become one of the largest companies in the world. Buffett has frequently recommended an S&P 500 index fund. In fact, he believes the know-nothing investor can actually outperform most investment professionals by periodically buying an S&P 500 index fund. In other words, Buffett is saying the average person, one with absolutely no knowledge about the stock market, can realize greater returns than most money managers without doing any work. Gen Z investors should take that advice to heart. And this is some of what I personally do. I personally do like like S&P 500 index funds because you just literally don't got to think about it, right? You could just consistently automatically invest towards your future without really ever thinking about it, like literally at all. So the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund. Well, let me pause this. As discussed, the S&P 500 is a good barometer for the broader U.S. stock market. The index measures the performance of 500 large-cap U.S. stocks, the creme de la creme of corporate America, and its constituents span all 11 market sectors. The Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, or VU, is an index fund that tracks the S&P 500, allowing investors to spread their capital across a diversified mix of blue-chip American businesses. Buying an index fund is certainly less exciting than buying individual stocks or cryptocurrencies, but it gets results. As mentioned, the S&P 500 produced a total return of 10.3% annually over the last five decades. At that pace, $150 invested weekly in the Vanguard ETF would be worth about $1.3 million in three decades. So Gen Z includes anyone born between 1997 and 2012. So the oldest Zoomers are turning 26 this year, which leaves them with roughly 40 years until retirement. That is more than enough time to become a stock market millionaire, even for those who cannot afford to invest $150 each week. 
The chart below shows how different weekly contribution totals would grow over the next four decades, assuming an annual return of 10.3%. So, investment, $50 per week, $75 per week, $100 per week, $200 per week. So we're going to go down this, 10 years, 42,000, 20 years, 150, 154,000, 30 years, 452,000, 40 years, 1.2 million. Actually, I'm just going to say that the end amount. So, if you invest $50 per week, you could get about $1.2 million. If you were to do $75 per week, you could get $1.8 million after the 40 years. If you do $100 per week, that's about $2.4 million. And if you do $200 per week, that is about $4.9 million after 40 years. So, it could really compound, obviously. So, what about individual stocks? Investors with no market knowledge and no desire to learn about sticks with an S&P, oh, should stick with an S&P 500 index fund and avoid individual stocks. But anyone who enjoys researching businesses should consider building a portfolio of individual stocks and an S&P 500 index fund. So as a, this person is saying like they're a millennial, blah, 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 blah. The thing is, if I was to express what I would do, right? Like what I would do and what I do do is I put money towards the S&P 500 index fund. Then with excess cash, I will put that into individual stocks, but I prefer to put things where I know over the long term they will compound. And also I never really got to think about it because that's my thing. I like keeping personal finance extremely simple, right? Because the reality is personal finance doesn't need to be very complicated. If you spend less than what you make, you put money consistently every month towards investments, and also you have an emergency fund, and also you're out of debt, guess what? You're pretty much doing all right forever, you know? So feel free to give your thoughts on this, but like a lot of people really like to overcomplicate trying to get wealthy or trying to get more money, right? People want to be like, I don't have much time. I want to be rich in one year. I want to be rich in like three years. I want to be rich tomorrow. But the reality is if people were to just do this consistently every week, right, every month, they will retire a millionaire, right? While also if they keep their like expenses below what they make per month, you will become a millionaire, right? Without any sort of like crazy things that you got to do, you just literally got got to like automate this, right? You could use like a Robinhood app. You could use like some sort of like brokerage account as well. You could even use your bank because some banks end up having a brokerage like side to them as well. Like you could just automatically put a few hundred bucks per month in like an S&P 500 index fund. Pretty much never think about it. Just automatically do that. Have it set automatically after your first paycheck of every week. And there you go. Right. After a few decades. Bam, you got a crazy amount of money in a retirement account or in a brokerage account without ever really thinking about it. And what's crazy, so many people are driving around with close to like a $700, $600 car payment, right? If you were to not have that car payment, but you were to put that same amount of money into basically the S&P 500, this like 4.9 million, yeah, you basically get like 5 million after 40 years because of what, 200 per week, 200, 400, 600, 800, yeah, basically you get about $5 million after 40 years. So basically, you driving your brand new car on debt, causing you to have like a massive car payment every single month, where you're spending hundreds of dollars every single month, is literally costing you from becoming a millionaire, which is crazy to me, right? So if you got credit card debt, student loan debt, car payments, 
you need to get rid of that so that you could funnel that money that you were paying on those debts to your investments so that you could actually retire. So that when you get to retirement age, you could just be balling. That's the way that I view it. Just keep personal finance simple, automatically invest your money, and don't really think about anything else. Like you don't have to think about or overcomplicate your personal finances. If you want to learn how to get out of debt, if you want to learn how I got a debt and grew my net worth, go down below.